um, let me introduce you first. So, hi everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to greet you on our uh, second seminar in 2023. So today we're going to have a talk by Nikita Ditkov, who is a PhD student in ITMO University called uh, Fine Tuning of Large Text to Image Models. Nikita, please. Yeah, thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, the topic is, as Andrea have just said, the, is the fine tuning of large text image models. And my name is Nikita. I'm a PhD student in it more and doing something related to this closely in my work. So uh, what are we going to speak about today? First of all, we're going to talk about the text image models and uh, what are they, how do they work, how, uh, how can we train them and so on. Uh, then we'll touch the um, way of fine tuning. Uh, why do we need fine tuning uh, and uh, how can we do this uh, using uh, all available um, models in open source? Uh, we'll touch two basic, uh, two, two main methods called the text random version and dream boost and the last words. By the last words, I mean um, other related details to the topic of the lecture of the seminar. Okay, let's go. So uh, what do we call the uh, text image models? It was a boom in the uh, last year of the text image models where we have seen a lot of pretty and astonishing images generated from just the text prompt, like uh, the ones I have shown on the first slide here. So the astronaut uh, riding a horse, a raccoon astronaut, uh, and the soup that is a portal to another dimension, like this. So uh, if we look at the timeline, we can see that uh, almost everything that was in this section was in the previous year, 2024. Um, one can say that there was a delay and delay make a great boom but uh unfortunately there was no uh such um different uh like novelty in a delay because not delay is basically just a, a gpt3 trained on text image so we do not touch the delay here we touch the glide delay 2 again part in majority stable diffusion and so on and so forth um so what do we call a text image model uh, large text image image model it was released in the previous year or after it was trained on a huge data set and it's uh obviously text model um, it's not uh, using the diffusion process inside because there are a lot of models that uh, produce high fidelity, great uh, detailed and realistic images without using the diffusion process. Uh, basically, they are just against under the hood, um, but nevertheless. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the stable diffusion uh, more precisely. Uh, we talk about this because it is an open source text image model, so you can uh, download and use its weights without uh, any problems. You can load it with the diffusions uh, diffusers library and uh, use it like in a Google Club, uh, just like this. So it's easy. Uh, next, it was trained on the big uh, dataset of annotated images. It uses clip for text encoding because uh, when we put the text inside of some model, we don't put the symbols, we put, uh, of course, some um, embeddings of those words. Next, uh, it uses diffusion process for the generation, and the generation uh, is uh, in the latent space, no, it in the pixel space. So we do not uh, generate the image uh, right on. We generate first it in the latent space and then decode it to the pixel space, finally. Okay, move on. Uh, I have to say briefly about the clip. What is clip? Um, clip is an open AI's uh, contrastive portrayed uh, network. It was trained to uh, create uh, embeddings of the text and image that would correspond to each other. So if we want uh, to um, somehow connect the images and text, we can use clip embeddings, just like this. Okay, stable diffusion. 
Um, here is an easy to understand outline of how stable diffusion influence works. First of all, I'm sorry, first of all, we have a prompt here. The only thing we put into the stable diffusion is the prompt. Here it is the pre doc. Then we have a clip text encoder that encodes this prompt to some uh, vector embedding of this size. Then, as generally in almost every generation uh, generative model, we have a random nice uh, that is uh, an input to the generator. We have a random noise here. It's in a latent space. Uh, the generator, uh, in a nutshell, it's uh, some unit with uh, cross attentions, um, uh, which is using a denoising process uh, to generate images. Okay, we put a random noise in it. We take a text and bending as a condition because we uh, not we do not want just to generate something uh, which uh, we are training on. We want to generate based on some condition. In our uh, options, uh, the condition is a text and a prompt. So, okay, uh, as an output, we have the denoised vector in the latent space, and now uh, we have a decoder to the pixel space, so we can get a pretty dark image in the pixel space. Now, a more complicated uh, uh, version of this uh, with the training, not on inference. Um, this can be difficult, but we will not uh, stop on this uh, uh, just brief uh, introduction to what uh, happens inside. So X is our image. E is the encoder, which is doing um, encoding from the pixel space to the latent space that I uh, introduced here. So we have here a noising, denoising diffusion process, which we will not dive in. But anyways, here is the unit with the cross attentions. And here is our condition. Uh, actually, condition can be not uh, only text. It can be semantic maps. It can be images because uh, we can have different tasks. Uh, not only image to image or text to image, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not only text to image, but we can have a image to image task. So we can take images as a condition also. And we do some uh, denoising procedure and then have an output uh, denoised uh, vector and decode it to the pixel space, uh, update uh, obtaining some image. Okay, uh, so how do other models uh, differentiate and what are the difference between them uh, in a nutshell. And there can be different uh, don't simply um, sampling methods. We in stable diffusion work in the latent space here because the pixel space is enormous and we do not want to um, take a huge amount of uh, computational powers on just processing this uh, stuff. We uh, use encoder and decoder here to uh, move to the latent space. Um, but nevertheless, there are models that are using not encoder and decoder in the latent space, but uh, down sampling and up sampling working in the pixel space, just in the minimized pixel space. So it's not uh, 32 by 32 by 4, but 64 by 64 by 3, like an image, just a small image. OK. So it's noise in the pixel space. We can have additional diffusion super resolution models, and not only one, but actually a two of them, of them, uh, because uh, we can work in a pixel space and generate forty-four. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, sixty-four by sixty-four by three um, dimension, and it's a low resolution image. We want to enlarge it and get uh, with the super resolution a big image, like um, thousand by thousand pixels. Okay. Uh, also, we can use uh, additional text embedding processors. So in those settings, we take condition as it is, but also we can uh, process, post-process this condition somehow. And this can yield some better results. And uh, we can use just UNET instead of uh, the diffusion process with the UNET, just like in uh, different GANs uh, approaches and so on. OK, now we can move to the fine tuning. Uh, so why actually can we uh, maybe uh, need this? For example, I have a dog. Uh, its name is Bobik. 
and I want my dog Bobby to be presented in different situations and in different conditions, say environments, and so on. I want to I want I want to have an ability to generate my uh, pretty dog Bobby, uh, let's say in Acropolis. But if I use the stable diffusion as it is and type Bobby dog in Acropolis, I will get those results. So definitely here is some Acropolis. Definitely, definitely here's some dog like this, but it's not Bobic, <laughs> and I want Bobic. Uh, and here's Bobic. So what can we do with this? Uh, actually, um, there is a little bit of um, mis misleading in my words because it's not actually a fine tuning. Here is the a special uh, phrase for this. It's actually called a text to image personalization, not just fine tuning. Um, so in the papers, you'll see uh, this uh, name of the text to image personalization. OK, so what are the problems? Why uh, the stable diffusion does know, uh, doesn't know what Bobic is? First of all, Clip doesn't know what is Bobic. So uh, it doesn't have a prior knowledge uh, of the textual uh, in textual space what is Bobic. Next, the generator doesn't know how Bobic looks like. Uh, because it was not trained on Bobic. Well, it, it's um, obvious. But anyways, uh, how can we change uh, the architecture and what can we do with this so we can know what Bobic looks like? First of all, uh, we can change the prompt itself. Instead of uh, typing pretty dog, we can type pretty Bobic dog. Yeah, so uh, it, it can be, uh, it can surely be Bobic inside of it. Next, we can uh, we have some text encoder. It cannot uh, always be clip. There may be some different uh, large language models, but anyways, we have a clip here, so we can change the clip. Um, and uh, the detail here uh, that clip text encoder is not just a encoder itself. There is also a tokenizer in it, and we have to keep this in mind. Also, we can change the generator and the decoder and anything else that is related to the generating itself from the noise and the condition. And here are our solutions. First of all, um, we can bring our dog, the Bobic, into the next, into the uh, text space. Um, otherwise, we can uh, learn how Bobic looks like in the image space. Uh, or as the third way, we can uh, use uh, both um, domains and um, learn how Bobic looks like and what Bobic is in both text and image spaces. And here are uh, our two main methods currently uh, for the February of the 2024, or I'm sorry, 2023. Uh, they are called textual inversion, inversion and the dream booth. And I will go all right one after another. So first of all, textual inversion. Um, the main idea in textual inversion is that we state that both generator and text encoder they are um, both enough expressive so they can uh, capture the uh, semantics. Uh, both textual and vision semantics of any object or any um, like any object we can uh, go with. So we uh, can leave them as they are, and we can work. Uh, we can leave the uh, vision uh, domain, and we can use only the text embedding domain uh, for our uh, personalization. Um, and uh, here we can just find a new token, uh, which would be uh, corresponding to the new object. So this is the main idea, to find a new token corresponding to uh, our object. Uh, excuse me, there is a typo. It's not out, but our. So uh, dream board. Uh We do not state that uh, generator and text encoder are uh, great enough so they can produce anything even if they don't do not know the um object and um 
we wish to train them or to fine tune them um, not like in text one version so for this we have to manually introduce a rare token we do not uh find a new token during the training procedure we just manually pick it a new token like a pretty dog or like blah 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 blah, blah, blah like this or anything you like uh these tokens have to be rare so it does not affect any other words that are presented in english language and are uh, already known in uh, the uh, visual and uh, text spaces uh and we have to choose the class of the subject uh so if it is dog then the class of the object is dog and uh, we need this to give a hint to the model so it can learn more efficient and we uh, will talk about this later because if we just fine-tune the generator there is a nuance and we'll talk about this I have to say that uh, the textual version is based on the clip and stable diffusion which are open sourced but dream boost is uh, based on t5 xxl and M again which are not uh open source uh imagine is not open source okay let's move to the text on abortion let's say we have a uh, samples a few samples three four five samples of our object and we want to have an ability to present this object in different settings as we have just said for example if we have this statue we want to have an ability to generate an oil painting or an app icon e of this statue, or even Elmo sitting in the same pose as our object. If we have, let's say, this pretty kitty here, we want to have a backpack with the pretty kitty over or an, an Banksy art in the style of our object, and so on. Um, here are the here is the way on how we do this. Actually, actually, it's a uh, pretty straightforward. So um uh, okay so we have samples input samples that like four samples here we have the um annotation of this like a photo of our object which is called as asterisk uh what's going in here we have a tokenizer uh we have some lookup table and uh, then we after the tokenizing the words we have an embeddings corresponding to those um indices in the lookup table uh, corresponding to the words in this prompt we pass them to text transformer sorry uh like a clip then we obtain this y um vector and we can use it as the um, condition to the generator. Actually, this is our um, generator, that, as I have shown you uh, in the slide on the stable diffusion. And our goal here is to make a generator, generate image from our sample from this exact prompt. So this, pro this process is actually the same as the uh, process of training vanilla uh, stable diffusion. The only difference is that we use uh, not the millions of millions of millions of images, but we use just several of images. And we freeze both generator and text transformer. We optimize our model. We train, fine tune our model in the uh, with the respect just to this exact uh, uh, word embedding which is corresponding to our word token that we introduce so the only thing is changing is uh this vector here which is corresponding to our word uh and uh, just map we fix text encoder we fix the generator we introduce a new token and it's embedding so a new token here and it's embedding okay so firstly we can just randomly initialize it it's not a problem and then we train our text image pipeline with respect to this embedding with the freezing frozen weights so we only optimize the embedding to find the most suitable um, embedding for our object and that's it 
So we just invent a new token and the output of this whole pipeline is just a new token. It's easy, but it just works. Okay, um, we move forward to the dream world, to the second method, but uh, briefly I have to say about T5XXL if someone is not um, acquainted with it. It's just a pre-trained uh, large language model we, which we can use in different um, domains and uh, downstream tests. It's just a great model. Okay. Now, Dream Boost. So our goal is the same. We want uh, the model to be able to generate our object in new contexts and with high fidelity. Uh, this is the image from the paper, uh, and they show that they can Actually, there are several ways, different ways, how we can um, do this um, uh, generation without even doing Dream Booth or doing Taxon version and so on. We have, let's say, a DALI 2, and we can uh, use the not text to image, but uh, image to image DALI pipeline and uh, have an image guided uh, generation. Let's say we have our images and we guide the generation of DALI 2 with uh, our image. Well, it definitely gives some output, but this output is not, and the object in the output uh, not looks like our object. This is a problem, so it not just works. Uh, we have, we, we can uh, choose uh, to pick the text guided method, so just text to image. Uh, but we do not um, use the image itself, we use its captions. So here uh, in this uh, example, uh, authors of the work, they choose and uh, carefully, very carefully uh, designed the prompt, which um, is using all the details of this clock here. So it's uh, that it has, that's yellow, it's uh, have the three on the right side and so on. Uh, so it's really a long um, text prompt, but here are the results. So it can generate uh, those this clock in a different context, but it's not high fidelity because it's not generating uh, this clock as it is here. So it's not working. Uh, definitely, it will not work in any other model. And next, uh, there is the result of the dream boot. So we use just several images of this clock fine tune uh, using dream booth method and can generate using text prompts uh, our object in uh, different new contexts and settings and use and with high fidelity. Okay, so here is the overview of the method. And we have uh, several input images. We have a class doc. We have a pre-trained uh, text image model. Let's say this is a stable diffusion or M again, it doesn't matter actually. We make a fine tuning and uh, then uh, using our uh, unique token as we have spoken about later, um, we can use it uh, into the in the prompt and genera gener generate uh, images with our uh, doc that we have here uh, in different settings and with high fidelity. Okay, it's understandable. Problems. We have a problems here, actually. If we just uh, fine tune um, the dream booth on the pairs of prompts and images of our object, uh, it will overfit uh, because of, um, well, it, uh, well, because of it, it just overfits, unfortunately. And uh, the authors of the paper have um, come to the prior preservation loss, and they uh, we will talk about just a little bit later. And they have shown the results. So if we overfit, we still have high fidelity images of our doc, but uh, we cannot uh, give it a different context like here. But actually, here uh, they are uh, using this prior preservation loss. We will talk about later. Next, language drift. Uh, it's a common problem in large language models that if we um, if we use some pre-trained uh, large language model and uh, fine tune it on some downstream task, um, the model tend to 
while while um, it uh, generates uh, and trains uh, to our custom task downstream task, it tend to forget how to um, generate um, common uh, or, or similar um, semantics and so on. So if we uh, just fine tune the uh, large, um, I'm sorry, the text image model with our images and uh, annotations, um, we still can generate a dog, just a prompt with the dog. So if we take a vanilla model with, uh, before pre-training uh, and generate the dogs, here are our dogs. If we train, uh, find, I'm sorry, fine tune uh, the um, text image model with our dog, Unfortunately, after this, uh, all the dogs would become similar to our dog. So uh, it will lose its diversity in the dog space. Let's call us like this. Um, but um, anyways, there is a prior preservation loss, which we will talk about on the next slide, which um, reduces uh, this problem to zero. Uh, if we apply this prior preservation loss um, on the fine-tuned model, we can generate just uh, different breeds of the dogs without losing the diversity. Next, the uh, fine tuning process itself with the um, prior preservation loss. So the idea here is very simple. Um, before we start training, we generate a few samples of dogs. Let's say we generate uh, 10 images of just with a prompt of a dog and we train our uh, model with the images of our dog and we call it a let's say talking dog a v dog uh, during the training we compare how um how uh, how uh, our model uh, if our model still can generate samples uh, diverse enough uh, while uh, while uh, having an ability to generate our dog. So uh, we do not only fine tune uh, on our images, we uh, simultaneously compare the dogs that the image is just generating not in, not exactly our dog, but just a regular ab ab abstract dog, uh, to how it was generating it uh, before the fine tuning. And uh, it's just another loss. It calls uh, class specific prior preservation loss. And using those settings, we uh, can include a more diversity into the generation of both uh, regular dogs and our uh, explicit dog. Uh, here is the part with super resolution because uh, Imagen uses also the super resolution component and um, the super resolution diffusion uh, model works um, in, the, in the following way. It uses not only the uh, random noise uh, as an input, but also it uses the image in the low resolution as a condition to produce a high uh, resolution images. Okay, so to sum up, uh, because this, is, this may be complicated, we do not touch the text encoder, it's fixed. We introduce a new token and a corresponding class. So a uh, class dog and our token, let's say it's V token. Next, we generate class images for our regularization, like here. So it's it's a frozen uh, text image model. We generate just uh, docs without without any specific details, just just docs uh, for regularization. Then we use additional loss to avoid uh, both overfitting and language drift. So um, our uh, doc can be uh, generated in different conditions. And uh, so our fine-tuned model uh, can uh, generate a different docs, not only our doc. When we train this model, uh, so the new token would represent our object. Um, in a sense, we just fine-tune it so it can understand a new word, uh, but with different uh, tweaks. OK, so the conversion between textual inversion and dream world. 
uh, for textual inversion, we do not change the weights of the model. Uh, we keep it as it is. Uh, and it's uh, I can say that this is a good or a bad sign. It's just how it is. Uh, and the output is the just embedding file at two kilobyte. We don't have to deal much with it. It's not a four gigabyte um, stable diffusion weights, just, just a little file. But uh, this method is quite uh, an easy and uh, this um, or, and its method produces not the best visual representation of our object. But anyways, it's work. It works. Uh, while Dream Booth, uh, we train the way we train the model, we change the weights, we manually choose the token and the class, but it produces the great fidelity, the great possible quality. Okay. And finally, uh, if we use some of the model, some of the methods. Um, finally, we can use our doc Bobic in the different uh, environments, and we can just type Bobic in the Acropolis, Bobic swimming, Bobic getting a haircut, and here are all the great results with Bobic. Okay. Uh, now, uh, last words. Is there only two methods? uh textual inversion and dream both no there are several other methods uh for example aesthetic gradients but it works with uh more with the styles of the image uh there is a LoRa and hyper network methods which are not um actually uh the difference between the dream booth and LoRa and hyper networks is that they um change not all the weights, but they introduce uh, new uh, intermediate layers and train them so we can adjust the uh, inner representation of the object. Okay, uh, it's not about uh, dogs only. Actually, we can do it with uh, other animals, uh, people, products, and so on. Uh, for example, you can, uh, maybe you have seen um a tons of generated uh profile pictures it was done using lenza ai or similar some similar apps it uh works like a dream booth uh so it, it takes uh several images of you actually it's 10 to 20 then it's fine-tuning the uh textual image models and uh, throwing to you uh, dozens of um generated images of you with different styles like in a Christmas party, like in a style of Del uh, of uh, uh, I don't know Van Gogh and so on, and uh, we can use it to styles also. Um, is it uh, so good as I uh, tell uh, tell about this? Uh, as I uh, talk about this, uh, as I speak about this, <laughs> no, it's not quite. Uh, there are some limitations, anyways. Um, the limitations are in the realism. So uh, if uh your object is uh, too complicated uh it can miss some details um anyways but unfortunately there is a trade-off be between uh overfitting and underfitting and uh ability to to um generate a different uh objects so anyways realism is an issue here edge cases like uh various uh poses of the object or different uh, light conditions like um, shades and so on. And instability. By instability, I mean uh, that, unfortunately, if you generate 10 images, the like eight of them would be uh, rubbish. <laughs> so only two of them would be really great. Uh, the others would have some um, issues, like, I don't know, uh, some um bad color or maybe bad anatomy if this is a person or animal or something like this because because it, it's still uh not the not the um an un, 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 uh method but anyways uh we can work around with those issues uh, with the realism, we can uh, make another fine tune on realistic images only. So we can take a stable diffusion network and fine tune it on only realistic images. So all the results would be close to the realistic style. Uh, second one, uh, edge cases. 
we can uh, handcraft the data set more carefully. So we can include uh, different variations of the light conditions of the poses of the, I don't know, uh, anything else you can imagine. So uh, it would generalize better to your object. About instability, unfortunately, it's inevitable uh, because of the um, different uh, inference settings and parameters we can tweak we can actually increase the number of images that would not go into trash um, folder but this would lead to a uh, lower diversity and this is all that i wanted to say to you thank you uh, now we have time for questions If you have some questions, well. I don't have any questions, but I would like to say thank you for this session. It was in English and it, I really like learned a lot from this and it really helped me understand a lot of things. So thank you. Oh, great. Thank you, too. It's, it's really hard to find uh, lessons in English. So thank you for that. Well, it's it's pleasure to give a give a seminar or a lecture in a different language and to have uh, this kind of um, uh, back. Um, uh, comment. <laughs> so we are we are like international students from empathy, and we don't have like opportunities here to attend like english seminars and lectures and stuff like that like you have here so i followed you through vk uh, and i i joined basically it more a machine learning lab and then i found about this so i'm so glad to be attending this and maybe i reach out to you personally as well okay great and again thank you for the session Nikita, thank you. Uh, just one question. Could you please uh, uh, send uh, a video of this uh, presentation, please, if you can do it? Yes, the, uh, actually, the seminar is recorded. So uh, I will send this seminar to the guy which is uh, <laughs> which would upload this to YouTube. So the seminar will be available on YouTube and uh, definitely there can be a link to it. Okay, yeah. okay, thank you. I will you. send it, uh, but to, to uh, <laughs> where to send it? Yeah, I want to, uh, I want to say a little bit, um, a few questions, but uh, now I, I can't do, to do it. And I want to connect with you after this seminar, if you can. Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, sure, you can uh, connect uh, to me, with, I don't know, in Telegram or as you wish and link it in. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Um, so yeah, okay, if no other questions, Nikita, thank you very much for your talk. So I have a couple and just to filter things which would be interested for other people who are listening. Uh, could you please go back to the slide where uh, you have been describing possible solutions, how to include Bobic into the picture? How to include Bobic into the picture? Yeah. Uh, those. This slide. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like, um, uh, uh, once we think about the exact example you have given, maybe there is quite a big problem in terms of uh, using the text-based approach because the Bobic itself is kinda not a word in general. It's just a nickname of a doc, which definitely has quite a lot of attributes, but basically these attributes are not really specific to describe exact doc. So uh, we can also imagine a case where there is uh, counterexamples for, uh, 
bad examples for a uh, visual based approach. But anyway, how do you think which of these two has uh, more or has less uh, holes where it can fall and would be not applicable? Well, uh, it's it's a difficult question, actually. Quick question. Uh, um, I can say uh, the following thing. Um, well, we can use only the text space. Uh, I can say I can say that uh, for in my in my opinion, it's um, quite expressive, quite uh, diverse, and can uh, express um explicit uh way how dog looks like in, in the way if we think about it uh in terms of the big data set of text uh and the the corresponding images we can uh understand that actually there were a lot of dogs different breed of dogs different colors of breeds of dogs in the data set and uh our Bobic, let's uh, let's say um I think that um Bobic can be um can be easily synthesized from the uh from the data set of the from the from the docs that were in the data set even in the textual context because um there even if there is high diversity and uh, and large number of docs and large number of uh the colors and so on I think that uh, it could be expressed using only text, um, using only text embeddings. But um, unfortunately, if we talk about the um, fine-grained details of, like, like uh, I don't know, the the structure of the eye or the structure of the um, so some um, points on the body of the dog, uh, I think that it cannot be uh well um produced and uh, we can use text space only uh with um only without the fine grained de details on the other hand um i mean if we use just only the text space on the other hand if we use the uh on the other hand we can use uh not uh, clip uh, text encoder, but some um, a lot more, uh, a, a lot a lot bigger uh, text uh, model like D5 XXL, uh, which was used in the Dream Boot paper. Uh, I think it have seen uh, seen in terms of uh, it have have read uh, a lot more uh, docs and so on, so it can be more um, more clear in this direction. But anyways, I don't think that this uh, this is a good idea. I think the best idea is uh, to <clears throat> uh, use both uh, text and uh, image space because uh, in dream booth paper actually we do not fine-tune the uh, text encoder but uh, it's proven by my experiments uh, in my own settings and with my own objects that if we use not only the generator, if we fine tune not only the generator, but also the text encoder, it works better. So uh, we can fine tune it only for a little uh, number of steps of iterations, but if but it yields uh, a lot better understanding of the object itself. So I think that uh, we should use both domains. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Actually, I believe that's um, just a small comment without going deeper. Uh, there is so-called identicate problem uh, in Russian is fotorobot. So if you just recall how precise uh, indicates, you can guess that uh, when we talk about something really familiar like human faces or for pet lovers, uh, their dogs, um, there is quite a huge problem that there could be no precise description in natural language of what we can observe with eyes. But yeah, uh, that's just a small comment on that. I do not precisely agree that we can describe everything, but still it's just a small portion of things that cannot be that well described.
yeah thank you I, I agree with your point it's it's mm, yeah, it's great yeah so thank you very much uh do we have any more questions So if no, uh, thank you. Uh, general commands, the video will be downloaded to the channel of the library. So if you somehow get the link, you have access to our social media pages and all the links, especially a link to our YouTube channel could be found there. But also, yeah, please, if you're interested, you could write to Nikita uh, and yeah, also ask video at the moment. So thank you very much. Thank you all for coming and have a good weekend. Yeah, the same for me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Nikita. Da, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, can you speak in Russian? Uh, yes, I can. No. OK. Такой вопрос. Скажи, пожалуйста, а вот это вот, то, что ты сейчас рассказывал, ты на это строишь какую-то свою научную работу или это имеет какое-то а, практическое применение сейчас в одном из а, проектов? Так, я сейчас... сейчас... Извините, секундочку, я закончу запись и...